Ryan Nordahl here with Epic Whitetail Habitat, LLC. Just out here today doing a little scouting on our property, on our Epic Proving Grounds. Doing a little hinge cutting, getting the start of a travel corridor. We've got a ladder stand over here. We're about, oh, I'd say 75 to 80 yards off our north property line. I've got a stand over here, ladder stand, that... Uh, we can sneak right from the north property line into this stand. We've got a food plot back here over to the south about 60, 70 yards from right here where I am. This travel corridor that I'm creating will come out of a bedding area along here. The north side will be screened off to block our entrance. We'll even, we're even thinking about putting a berm along that whole length to screen our entrance as we access other stands back to the east along our property line. We're not sitting on our property line, but we're using our north property line on a southwest wind to access our stands around our north edges of our property. We're creating this travel corridor to come out of a bedding area from another food plot as well to meander through here and waste a deer's time as he comes through here, twists and turns, but we're funneling deer. We're defining that deer movement, which we so badly need. And I'm in here today with my Hueyman handsaw, just getting the start, cutting some trees, so I can come back in here at a later time when the snow isn't so deep and really start hinge cutting to improve this travel corridor. Hinge cutting is a great way to define deer movement, not just for bedding areas. We can funnel deer where we want them to go where we want them to be for the perfect bow shot if we're bow hunting our property. Or no matter what you're using your property for, whether it's gun hunting or archery season. A lot of misconceptions that hinge cutting is bad. We've got a lot of snow on the ground right here in west central Wisconsin. We probably got close to 20 inches of snow on the ground right here. I've packed it down with my feet. But I've instantly put a lot of woody browse down on the ground, which is essential to a deer's diet. These buds, there's a lot of protein in these buds and a lot of roughage in these buds to buffer that rumen. You've got to buffer that rumen pH. Keep it in balance for that bacteria and that rumen to not go acidotic from the excess corn that many guys are feeding in this area right now because they wanted to supplement the deer with something to get them by through the winter. You put a lot of shock on that rumen. The last thing we want to do is give a deer subacute rumen acidosis. I've seen it a lot in dairy cattle and we see it in our deer herd as well. Just that initial shock, they're gonna to go to the easiest food there is available. And corn is very acidic as it breaks down in the, in the rumen and the abomasum of a deer's gut. This will provide great roughage scratch factor in that rumen to balance the pH of that rumen so they don't go acidotic and start killing the essential bacteria that's in that rumen. But what a great way to spend a nice after March afternoon, early March, we're the 8th of March here today, and uh, it's been a cold, long winter. Cabin fever is getting the better part of a lot of us. I know it was me today. I did not want to be sitting in my office working on habitat plants, so I had to get out here, trudge through the snow, get back here, and at least get a start so I have some definition on how I want this travel corridor to go. We're getting Nancy to get out here, every one of us. So we got to be safe as well. But have fun. That's the name of the game. Know what you're doing is for the betterment of the deer in your area. But just have fun doing it. Again, Ryan Nordahl here with Epic Whitetail Habitat, LLC. Thanks for joining me today.